How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video and it seems in the midst of the video game awards drama where Xbox got snubbed on almost every account, it looks like certain studios, certain companies decided that they would take this opportunity to try and avoid the drama, the backlash, the onslaught from the community in laying off staff. But as always, that news is still going to be made public and it has been made public and my oh my some of the reasonings behind the decisions to get rid of stuff is mind baffling but we're going to go through that right now there's actually two here that have actually done this we've got amazon of course they lay off people on a regular basis but we've also got 505 games that are doing it as well so first thing first let's go with amazon over here amazon lays off 180 workers says all people really want from prime is free games if we actually go over here they say we've listened to our customers and we know delivering free games every month is what they want most i mean who's gonna say no to free games let's be realistic right who's gonna say no to free games it's not actually free you need to be part of the amazon prime subscription but who's gonna say no Amazon Games is laying off 180 employees, primarily focusing on its Prime-related offerings. The entire team from Crown Channel, an Amazon-backed channel on Amazon-owned Twitch, has been let go, and the news adds to a miserable pile of layoffs across the gaming and tech industries in 2023. Amazon itself made 100 job cuts in April, so that makes it almost 300 in total this year. The news was first reported by Reuters and also affects Amazon's Game Growth Initiative, which focused on helping publishers promote their titles and is being closed, although it's still advertising eight open positions at the time of writing. Crown Channel is especially notable, however, as a high-profile organizer of game-related events on Twitch, featuring major personalities, which you'd have thought Amazon could make work. Not so, said a Bloomberg reporter earlier this year, which claimed that the channel's viewing figures were being misrepresented through tactics such as making it autoplay on the homepage. Amazon, of course, denied inflating the metrics. Crowd Channel was all about pulling together Amazon's disparate gaming strands and creating an engaged audience it could market, it could market its other offerings to. But clearly... That strategy has now gone the way of the Kododo, basically extinct. Christoph Hartman, VP of Amazon Games, sent an email to all Amazon Games employees about the cuts. It rather bluntly states that a part of the company's bold vision is to experiment and review these experiments and things don't get better from there. The leadership team and I have made the difficult decision to close two of our initiatives, Crown Channel and Game Growth. We are also refocusing our efforts for Prime Gaming. We've listened to our customers and we know delivering free games every month is what they want most. So we are refining our Prime benefit to increase our focus there. With these changes to our business approach come changes to our resourcing, resulting in the elimination, Jesus, they actually went there, of just over 180 roles. It's actually more than 180 people. There's further management talk about this being difficult news and how proud of the work Amazon is. Hartman says Amazon Games is now focused on the launches of Friend and Liberty and Blue Protocol, both of which is publishing as well as longer term projects like its Tomb Raider and Lord of the Rings. I suppose at least with the wider company's profits at record levels, just under 10 billion in the last quarter, those affected won't have to worry about their severance pay coming through. It's pretty damning at the moment because the cuts are happening all over the place. It is all over the industry. But this one is especially weird because they basically reached out to their community and asked, hey, what do you care about more? Paid for games or free games? And then people said, yeah, we want free games. And they said, right, we're going to get rid of it. All those people then because uh, we don't need them anymore. It's, it's like really weird. Of course, then we come on to this story here. GTA's publisher thinks longer games should cost more. Now, this dude here says, I would gladly play up to $300 for GTA 6 Standard Edition. And I think most people would agree with me. And this one says... <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
It's... <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's a private. <laughs> I can't even say it. <laughs> it's a pirate's life for me, Sammy. <laughs> oh, oh, that one got me. That one got me. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Corporal bootlick is everywhere. Oh, man. Oh, oh, these two, these two got me. These two got me. That was good. That was good. I'll give it to them. 10 out of 10 for, the, for that. That was brilliant. That was fucking brilliant. Okay. GTS publisher thinks longer games should cost more. Strauss Zelnick, the CEO of Take Two Interactive, the longtime publisher of the Grand Theft Auto series, has gone on record professing a complex concept that would see gamers charged more for longer games. He rolled out a confusing algorithm that would effectively have players pay more for a longer game based on their expected entertainment usage. Simply put, the longer the game and the more you're expected to play it, the more you'll pay for it. It makes sense, right? It might be a confusing concept on paper, but it makes sense. How many of us paid $60 for something like Grand Theft Auto V, only to then play the game on a loop for thousands of hours over the next decade? It's a damn good deal for gamers in that respect. That's why Strauss Zelnick suggested during a financial call that there's a clear monetary issue in gaming, with the frontline prices being desperately low. In terms of pricing for any entertainment, he says, Sorry, he says, in terms of pricing for any entertainment property, basically the algorithm is the value of the expected entertainment usage, which is to say that the per hour value times the number of expected hours plus the terminal value that's perceived by the customer in the ownership of the title is actually owned, not say rented or subscribed to. And, and you'll see that the bear, bears out, and you'll see that that bears out in every kind of entertainment vehicle. By that standard, our frontline prices are still very, very low because we offer many hours of engagement. Uh, if Zelnik were to apply this logic to the sales of Grand Theft Auto 6, which is being revealed next month, it would likely carry a price tag worth several hundred dollars. Now, there is always that conversation that's been happening with Zelnik where he says he wants to actually price it at $150 but a standard edition. And um, with these sorts of conversations happening in the background, it could very well be that Grand Theft Auto 6 could cost, you know, up to $200 for the standard edition. And we're looking maybe three, 400 for the ultimate edition or, you know, uh, with like early access for by five days and people will pay for it. Grand Theft Auto is one of those games where people will pay that price. And it's crazy to think that they will, but, you know, it is just one of those things. The fact is, I can see where he's coming from, but that's just not the way to do it. That's not the way to go about it, especially in times like this when people are suffering from such economical difficulties. But at the same time, Grand Theft Auto 6 cost nearly $2 billion to make. So he wants to reclaim that money as soon as possible, and you'll basically have the biggest chance of reclaiming that within the first week. That's when most people go out and buy the game. After that, it's basically waiting for sales or a little price drop here, or people trading their games to try and pick it up. But it's really scary and dangerous for the consumers, at least, with this sort of pricing, because if GTA can get away with selling the game, you know, GTA 6 for $150, $200, What's stopping other companies from doing the same? I know GTA 6 is huge, but there are other big franchises out there. What's stopping them 
from trying to emulate this or you know even if they don't hit the 200 mark maybe 120 dollars once those floodgates are open they are open this is pretty pretty scary stuff owner of the stranding pc and control publisher 505 lays off 30 percent of staff it will focus on sequels and previously successful games because that's what works now if we look at this over here this is actually a really powerful statement and it's also sad at the same time uh, 505 games parent digital bros announces sweeping layoffs digital bros group perhaps best known in the video game industry as the owner of publisher 505 games which is behind the likes of control ultimate edition which is getting a sequel death stranding pc which is getting a sequel is laying off a whopping 30 percent of its global workforce and doubling down on sequels because that seems to be what the industry wants and quite honestly the moment a new ip gets announced it's not recognized it's not uh given a chance to flourish it's not given a chance to be successful we've seen this with hi-fi rush we've seen this with starfield new ips are a massive risk we've seen this with callisto protocol where the game just wasn't in the right place or it just came out in a state where it really shouldn't or simply be they made difficult decisions that just didn't go their way either way it's clear that when a new IP is being designed or built, it's a massive risk and companies only have one chance in general to succeed with those big risks. And if they don't, they fold or it costs the company an enormous amount of money. Now, when we're looking here and what Sony has been doing for the past two, three years is doing a lot of remakes, remasters, and those are safe bets because those people that you know didn't get a chance to play them on the ps3 or the ps4 can now get to play them on the ps5 sure when they remade last of us one at the end of the day if you've got a ps5 and you don't have a ps4 well now you've got the chance to play it in all its glory with all the bells and whistles i'm not saying i agree with it but it's a much safer bet with much less resources thrown in and a much less cost overhead than it is to create a new ip like say something like starfield and with more and more companies taking this approach, creativity as a whole within the industry is being killed. It's getting thrown out, and it's sad to see. Uh, Digital Bros announced the news in a press release published earlier today. Judging from the employee reports popping up on social media, at least some of the layoffs are already in effect. It's worth reiterating the sheer mind-boggling scope of laying off 30% of your workforce in one go. Some of the biggest and highest profile games layoffs of the year like those at Bungie and Epic Games, were well under 30%. But it's not a small amount either. 30% is still a huge chunk. What prompted these layoffs? Digital Bro reckons the video game market has evolved since the pandemic to be more selective in terms of new games. I, I kind of agree because people are not willing to give new IPs a chance. And if it's a new IP and not on your favorite platform, like we've seen with Starfield, they will go out their way to make sure that that new IP is absolutely destroyed. Good job, gaming industry. Good job. Well, I wouldn't even say gaming industry. Good job, media, and good job, influencers, and good job, you bellends on Twitter. The video game market has evolved since the pandemic to be more selective in terms of new games, with consumers increasingly reverting to well-established intellectual properties and playing these same games for longer period, i.e. Destiny. Digital Bro's strategy has to adapt to this new and evolving competitive scenario and will focus its efforts moving forward on the release of sequels and new versions of previously successful and established titles with a limited number of new larger budget productions. So basically, the focus on new IP is pretty much going to be non-existent. It's not surprising to hear a company argue that sequels, remakes, reboots and other re re retreads are much safer than a new IP, as we've seen uh, currently, although Liza P is a new IP and is doing very, very well, nor is it news for the industry. The AAA space has been singing that song for years. What's more surprising is to hear it from the owner of 505 Games, which has spent years publishing a lot of more out there games. But I guess we won't be seeing that anymore because it's clear that those out there games or those risky games or those games that are 
hit and miss based on the fact of you know being in uip just aren't worth the risk in this day and age and it's uh well it's gonna be it's gonna hit creativity no matter how you look at it it's behind ghost runner brothers a tale of two sons bloodstained ritual of the night abzu last day of june journey to the savage planet Auden chronicles indivisible and plenty of other games that are decidedly not previously successful Granted, Digital Bros has only discussed its overall strategy and it's not clear how hard the layoffs will hit the uh, 505 games itself. And per, announce, and per today's announcement, new projects have not dried up entirely. Even so, it's hard to imagine a publisher will weather this storm with its same creative breath intact. And, you know, it's really sad to see that they took this opportunity to try and slide this out to try and avoid the gaze of all the media but there is a truth to the fact that people are more inclined to buy sequels of games that they trust than new ip and when a new ip comes along if it's not on your favorite plastic well then they get even more upset and make it their life's ambition to ruin that game Fuss, I guess, in essence, shutting down, potentially shutting down studios, and then they will, those same people will go to Twitter and start crying that X uh, studio got rid of X amount of people, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, the reality is it's no one else's fault but yours when it comes to that sort of attitude. But 30% of layoffs, you know, 30% layoffs is a huge number. So we've got like 180 from Amazon because gamers prefer free games. And then you've got this over here with 5% layoff because uh, deciding that making a new IP is just not worth the effort. And so making sequels to games where you already have the blueprint just doesn't require the amount of staff. So they're just going to get rid of them because it's less work anyway. I don't know. To me, that's that kind of stinks. And it shows that the games industry is definitely heading in the wrong way and creative thinking is going straight out the door anyway let me know what you think in the comment section below let's have that discussion and i'll see you in the next one remain legend mm -hmm.